Shevin Cordero, I think he's in his sixth year of college football. What impresses you about the way he handles, he's obviously a great player, but the way he handles the offense? Well, you said it. I mean, first of all, you got a guy that played a good number of snaps in 2018. And uh, probably any time you do something for a while, you get better and better and things around you probably slow down a little bit, I think probably in any job. And if you're in year six, I mean, I think when he first started playing college football, we probably had guys that weren't even old enough to have a driver's permit, a bunch of them, you know. So uh, very, very talented, uh, clearly understandable why he was the choice as the conference player of the year, uh, his movement, the ability to throw, uh, you know, just all the things that help. Uh, the tools, and certainly the experience. To what degree are you guys conscious of and working on his ability to get out of the pocket and run? You have to because it's – now, you can say it. We're saying it. But being able to – he's going to get out. It's going to happen. You know, you just hope it doesn't happen significantly. And as far as your quarterback goes, what what's the next step in Zach's development and having this job? What's the next thing that you would like to see him build upon what he's done over these first three games? Yeah, uh, you know, you just it's the tiniest of the smallest improvement and it's not an automatic step. You know, you don't say I always take one step forward. That's nobody does. You know, I mean, Lou Gehrig didn't. And so, I mean, it's just a little bit forward, learn from a mistake. A little bit forward, learn from a mishap. That's the reality of it. And the way that C.J. Boyd has played at that spur position, stepping in um, for Camby, uh, talk a little bit about how well he's done to fill that role. Yeah, I mean, just solid football when it comes to awareness, um, quality of interaction, communication on the field is invaluable, I think, certainly at that spot. And um, skill-wise, and that, that guy does so many different things at that position. You could be attached to the box and have to play against big guys you could be in man coverage covering a slot receiver that's a small – I mean, just – you could be in the middle of the field. You could be a half-field player. Um, that's a pretty unique role that – what we ask from that position. Coach Emmanuel having a big week on Friday, a big night on Friday. Um, how does he kind of elevate that fullback running, running back room and how impressed were you with him on Friday? Well, it was the yards, the the harder yards, the yards after contact. Um, Because really you go back and you look at a good number of those carries. And sometimes you get carries maybe where there's some space to run. And there was some space, but there wasn't. It wasn't from here to that other wall, you know, and that's natural. That's football. And, um, And that was good to see. What are the biggest challenges that San Jose State poses and kind of what's your message going into the second Mountain West game? You, <laughs> the challenges are immense. I mean, you're looking um, – you have the conference player of the year on offense in addition to how many weapons they have, how old they are. Um, defensively, I'm trying to think last time we played them, we scored six points. I mean, goodness. So our offense to have to face that task, um, it's uh, on the surface. It's it's completely it's a mismatch on the surface of what goes on. You know, being able to add guys from other schools, whether they're from Oregon State or Kansas State or USC. I mean, we aren't even in the same stratosphere really that way. I guess you, you just kind of touched on a lot of this, but I guess looking from afar, that's a program that's come a long ways, you know, during their time in the Mountain West. What what have you kind of noticed the differences now in their program now versus maybe seven, eight years ago? Well, we say that. Now, I think, uh, golly, it was only 11 years ago, somewhere in there, where I think they, they won 11 games. 
you know, uh, that would have been uh, Mike McIntyre when he was there. They're really, really good. Um, I mean, they're they're all in. You look at a brand new football operations building. How much that matters, uh, and how you meet. I mean, just what you're able to cultivate in terms of the team building part of it. And, and you look at the investment, just how much they pay their staff, how important that is, too. I mean, that's a, I always say it's the number one indicator of how much you value your program. And uh, with a quarterback that can get out of the pocket and do damage with his legs, you know, historically, I, I remember like Chucky Keaton and some other guys who have had some issues on your end with that. But it seems like that's, you've kind of gotten better <laughs> in that way. Do you think that's the case? And is that something you can replicate in practice because of the skill set of your scout team? I, I don't think you can replicate it in practice just because so much of it is uh, spontaneous, you know, with how it occurs. And uh, we've never faced a challenge like this. I mean, just the sheer arm strength, uh, the strength that he has to break tackles, uh, the way he still – Hurts people running the ball or with his eyes down the field. I mean, it's – you said a challenge. I mean, it's, it's – I, I, I truly don't know if we've seen a – you think back over the last – you know, if you had to say, all right, who's, who's the best quarter? We'll go back to somebody – we've seen some really, really, really good ones in this league. Um, they had the one just over the border north of here that was a pretty good player that now is – with Buffalo, there was another one that was at TCU called Dalton that played in the NFL for a few years, or still is for a lot of years. I mean, just this guy's every bit as talented in a different way. You told us a few weeks ago how Zach Larry was able to kind of earn that starting gig. Have you seen him kind of step into that role and gain confidence over the past three weeks? You have, and, and, and that takes time, though, too. Um, you know, I think he realizes that, golly, there's, there, there's a good bit of growth out in front of us individually for him as a player, but also for our team. And, um, you know, our guys are pretty realistic. I mean, we're, we've had a two-win season here. We've had a three-win. It wasn't that long ago we only won three games in a season. Our guys realize how hard it is to be competitive here. Zach does too. And um, yet that's part of the challenge a little bit of being at the academy also. And you mentioned the mismatch of this week. Does that change your guys' approach, or do you stick to your bread and butter and what works for you? Well, I, I think this thing, just the awareness, you know, being completely um, – it's obvious. I mean, just what a what a challenge and really just where, how far apart we are, you know, in some ways. Yet uh, our guys will go to work and they, today. They'll practice well. They'll lift well. And, um, you know, it's a tiny school. We are really – you look at it in terms of enrollment, you compare the – there, there's just – there's so many aspects, there's just no comparison. And so can you overcome all that? That's part of the challenge too. Uh, in a year that Jonathan Youngblood has finally kind of gotten his position, as you know, he's had a lot of experience but never his spot. Have you seen any differences in him or what is he able to bring now that he is a – Yeah. He, it just his maturity. Um, he's always taken whatever he had to do, and he's always going. No matter what, he's going to make himself better. And um, I still remember we're getting ready to play our bowl game uh, in December, and it was a little chilly that day. So when we did the walkthrough that morning. We went over and we said, "Hey, let's get the other guys. Let's have have them do some stuff on the side also." And just how dialed in he was in his group. And he believed, hey, maybe I will be called, maybe I won't, but I'm going to be ready. I mean, it just the admiration you have for a guy that's that, I don't want to say a professional because there's still young people playing a game. But to have that kind of mentality, golly, I mean, that's, that's contagious. And you hear me say that word a lot, contagious. That is. And, um, well, we get into that game, we get about seven, eight plays into it defensively. And guess who's got to go out there and play the rest of it and played really, really well in that bowl game. And it was not warm that night. I mean, he still got in there and mixed it up. 
Yeah, no, this is uh, Trey Jenkins, a uh, safety from San Jose, mm -hmm. was at Media Days. He said he was on campus here as a recruit. He said he actually almost got left behind at one point because he was his nose was bleeding so much while he was here. Do you remember anything about him as a recruit? I don't remember that. that. Oh, yeah, yeah, I definitely do, the person. Um, a really talented player, bright. Um, and, uh, golly, we, we, we were interested. P.J. Ramsey. What steps have you seen him take in this season? It really looks like he's playing really well on that defensive line. You know, when we first identified P.J., he was very, very young. Uh, I think he's one of those guys that they start him at school a little bit early to get him challenged because he is pretty capable. Um, uh, tremendous family. Uh, and we just felt like when he came into our program, it may take some time, just natural fill out, growth, uh, the body development. But um, he's, he's, a, he's a pure joy to coach. I mean, great outlook, great attitude, uh, the energy that he has, how much he cares about other people. And you either add, add to the chemistry or take from the chemistry. He adds immensely to help others. And... Uh, you know, just the strength, uh, the, adding some power to what he, you know, the way that he plays. And I thought where it was most evident was in the back half of last season. And lo and behold, my goodness, you know, you saw it in the middle of last season. You thought, all right, he's two and a half years in. Most places, you're only at the halfway point or where you play, right? <laughs> well, um, and the versatility. I mean, he just football comes so naturally for him, uh, whether it's uh, playing in a three-point stance, two-point stance, um, certain weeks being able to move him in different spots. In, in your time, it, whether it be recruiting or, or paying attention to high schools and, and what they produce, St. Louis Prep has produced Mariota, <laughs> yeah. uh, Tuya Sopo, Tua, and now Shevin. What is it, if you know, I'm curious about that program where they just churn out quarterbacks at that level? Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I'm allowed to address that. I don't think you can say anything really about a high school program. You okay. went through something that you went through it on your own. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Anyone else want to get coaches trouble? Just one more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brent's going to try. All right. Back to PJ real quick. It seems like there have been a number of guys since you've been here who have had breakout senior years who didn't get much playing time beforehand. And then, you know, I think of Ben Waters, Jordan Pierce, there, there have been a number of them. Is there something that those guys bring because they've been in those role positions for so long? And then once they get to really play and be part of the team, that they, they maybe add something to the culture? Golly, man, you, when you say that with those guys, I mean, it does make some bumps come up on your arms in the back You're just because they're guys that, that, that – there has to be some perspective, some maturity uh, to recognize that it's a little bit of fairly long haul process. And um, – and they understand that. Um, I think part of it, I'm not saying it's automatic, probably a little bit of it is inherent when you come to the academy. Um, I don't know if you necessarily come here because the first 30 days are going to be easier or more glamorous or you go through more rush weeks than you do if you went to school somewhere else. I mean, and football is probably like that a little bit too. And the guys that realize – coaches are the same way. I mean, the guys that realize, you know what, every day I'm going to learn. Every day I'm going to get better. And if I just get a tad bit better each day and you believe in that and more so you're dedicated that way, you're committed that way, golly, there have been some guys that have made themselves be good players. And – um those usually are about a solid, trustworthy, and dependable guy, especially that senior year. Caleb was in here last week and said the biggest thing for you guys offensively was just getting to your identity, and he thought maybe the first two games you guys hadn't been able to do that. Um, the results make it seem like you guys did. Um, 
What is the identity of this team and what were you able to showcase against Utah State? Um, I think our identity is, you know, we're going to we're going to be strong, we're going to be physical up front. We're going to run the football, we're going to make you pay with throws and we're going to try to hold on to the ball and we're going to make it physical and I think we showed that the last game and I think that's what we go into every game with now. 3 games into you having the starting quarterback gig, a little self-assessment. What, what have you liked about what you've done and what would be something that you still think you have to perhaps unlock or, or improve upon as the season goes on? Um, I like that I've been able to, for the most part, hit the throws that we needed and um, been able to be a physical runner and be a threat in the, in the run game and also – I think I just want to work on just keep holding on to the football. That's the number one thing. It's the number one thing that probably hurt us in Sam Houston, and and it'll and that's that's steady for every single game. It'll always be the biggest deal. So I'm trying to work on that. Zach, what were you able to learn from Hazik Daniels the past couple seasons being behind him? I think the biggest thing to learn from Zeke was like his just poise and his like calm nature out there. Like he never gets too high, he never got too low, and you know it's really important for the position that me and Zeke played, and so yeah, that's the biggest thing I take away from Zeke. I know your guys' team had a ton of chemistry last year. How are you continuing to kind of build that this this year, and do you feel like you guys have uh, come a long way in three weeks? Um, I mean, the more and more you get out to battle with those guys, you're you're just going to learn to trust them more and more, and I think that's just all part of it. And and we just we trust each other, and we rely on each other, and so it's been good. Zach, three games into it, you know, as the starter. Physically, how are you feeling? Because that's not something you can, you know, practice, I guess. You know? Right. Yeah, um, I feel pretty good. I've, I'm practicing every day, so I, I feel pretty healthy. And I just – I think the biggest thing for staying healthy is, like, running with your pads down. I mean, you look at Brad Roberts making it through all of his years. He's always the one putting the hurt on somebody instead of the other way around, and he seemed to come out healthy. So I try to just keep running the ball the same way, and that's about it. Uh, playing on Friday night, you know, this guys will be the only show in town, so to speak. Do you kind of look forward to kind of showcasing the team's ability and your ability as well, just because the spotlight's on you for those three hours? Yeah, I mean, I think I think every game we we want to showcase our ability, whether we're the spotlight or not. And if we're not the spotlight, we want to be the spotlight and just play a great game. So yeah, it's exciting to play on Friday, Saturday. I think we'd line it up on Wednesday in the parking lot if we had if we could and. So I'm excited. This matchup, you know, it's a quarterback on the other side who's a reigning Mountain West Player of the Year on offense. Like, is there some excitement you get from that, like being able to, to go up against someone like that and kind of see where you stand? I think not only is it good to go up against a good player, but just you want to play quality teams and quality opponents. I think Coach Yahoo probably talks about that all the time. So when you play against a quality player, it's kind of that same deal. Like you want to earn your wins. You don't want to play – uh, low tier team or players, you know. So in that sense, yeah, I look, I look a lot forward to it. But other than that, I mean, he's a good player, and they got a lot of good players, and we got a lot of good players. So it's exciting. And when he was asking about, you know, what you can't replicate in practice, you know, you've been in practice for a long time. But yeah. I know when I watch practice, <laughs> the quarterbacks aren't usually live. You know, yeah. so is it a, a little bit of an adjustment period to when you are actually playing option football and knowing when to pitch it when people are actually hitting you and it's it's real football. Yeah, like you said, I mean, we're not live at practice. The last four seasons, I haven't been live at practice, but the last 14 seasons before that, I was live playing football. So I think, you know, it's it's easy to figure out how to go out there and be a runner. And so, yeah, I think it's fine. It, it's all part of the game. The NFL quarterbacks aren't live either, so. Uh, you mentioned earlier making sure that you're hitting the passes you should. I remember against Robert Morris that, that first um, – seam route down the middle, you miss, and then you hit the next two, and they were big plays uh, to Jared. Um, how is that um, th that developing between you and Jared, that, that relationship? Because that's, that's a staple of this Air Force offense, right, you being able to link up for those huge plays. So talk about the relationship between you and Jared in, in those situations. Yeah, I mean, I love Jared and all the X's, I mean, we trust all those guys out there. I mean, you see them, they all get in there, they all get playing time, they all get playing time for a reason because they're good players, and 
we all trust him on offense. I trust him personally. Coach Deason trusts him on offense. So, I mean, the trust is definitely there, and it's built up from not just what you guys have seen the first two weeks, but spring ball, the fall camps, and all that. And that, the, your, for the quarterbacking job, that was – an open competition we didn't know if you were going to be the guy and maybe you guys knew more than we did but um how much did that you know benefit you going through it? because Hazik there's always competition right but Hazik because of what he did the year before was like well he's the guy and there was a little bit more of an open-ended question being in that quarterback competition in spring ball and in practice and stuff how much did you benefit to every practice maybe playing for a job? Um, I mean, I'm already competitive, so having something to compete for, you know, I don't need any extra juice to fire me up. And I also want to say, like, Zeke earned that job every single day, you know. Like, you, you guys might not watch every single practice, but we're there every single day. Zeke earned that job every day for three years that he played. And being able to watch that and be a part of that is, is great, and it just teaches you how you need to come at every single day if you want to be in that position like he was. Emmanuel Michel had a huge night on Friday night. Obviously, you love to run the ball. You guys have some great runners on your team, but can you just speak to his talent and what he was able to do on Friday? Yeah, it was amazing to watch. I mean, he's popping right up after those plays. I mean, he's got 28 carries. I think he's a great runner. He runs with good pad level, and he's he's good at making the right cuts, you know, and – I don't know. We love E-Man. There's a reason why he touched the ball 28 times. And, yeah, I mean, E-Man's a great runner, and I think he showed it. Do you feel like those guys are kind of picking up the slack or the shoes? They had big shoes to fill, obviously, with Roberts. Do you feel like they're living up to that? Yeah, I think they definitely are, for sure. I mean, especially if you watch the last game, you know, the fullbacks got a lot of action. And, and that's what we – I mean, it's no secret that we want our fullbacks to get a lot of action and be great runners. And if Coach Cahoon and Coach Deason are putting the ball in somebody's hands – 28 times, 40 times as a group, or 45 times as a group, I think it, it shows if we trust them or not and if they've been filling the shoes or not. Because the quarterback position was spoken for through last year, was there ever talk about moving you somewhere else permanently just to utilize your speed? And I guess who advocated for keeping you at quarterback? Was that you or was that a coach? I mean, last year um, I played a little bit of tailback before I got hurt, and, I, and then when I came back I was still – playing tailback because they just wanted to find ways to use me out there and and when I came back I mean after the bowl game this year coach Deason just called me and asked me if I wanted to play quarterback or not and I said yes I want to play quarterback for the Falcons I think it's a great opportunity and so yeah we just went on from there and the quarterback battle ensued I guess but yeah okay. and then uh when coach was in here we were I was asking about some some players through his time that haven't really played until their senior year and what they've brought in terms of perspective. And he said he got chills on his arms just thinking about some of those guys, Ben Waters and on down the line. You're kind of one of those two who hasn't had a lot of experience before your senior year. What does that do for your mentality, just knowing what you've put in, the time that you, and the time you've had to wait? And how does that kind of manifest itself in the way you see things now? Yeah, I mean, you really realize that the games are numbered. You start off with 12, and even those 12 aren't a given. So you play hard to try to get 13, and you just take every day. It's blessed to play this game. and So, yeah, I love it. Every day of practice, you just love to get out there and play the sport you love. So I think that's what it offers to you. When you've been playing it so long, sometimes if you haven't got a lot of run in the game or whatever, you start to think, like, oh, like when you're doing a lot of practicing and not a lot of playing, it's it's kind of difficult. But I don't know. I just I love the game. So practicing, <laughs> it didn't matter if I was practicing, playing, or what. And so – I don't know, it worked out for me, and I'm having a good time. I hope I bring a good perspective of just appreciating the days, you know, for the younger guys. Um, what, kind of, what kind of system did you play in in high school? Were you throwing a lot? Or? We ran the uh, – my high school ran the split back veer in high school. So, like, two backs, option, football. So, yeah, so I love the option. I do. I really, I really do love it. So, like what, it's great. What was your career high in passing attempts that you could remember? Um, in a game, probably about, I think one game we might have threw about 20 times, but I'd say I, we averaged about seven pass attempts a game in high school, which is low for sure, but it's not as, it's not as low as I guess you would think. Sometimes, I mean, here, we're just weren't, we threw the ball more because we weren't as good as running it as we are here, <laughs> even though we ran it every play in high school, so, uh, yeah, but, yeah, so, 
ran the option in high school. It was a little bit different than here, so there was a little bit of a learning curve, but I don't know, you just, it was helpful to know, I don't know, that you're a runner first is kind of a good mindset, and so yeah, it's good playing option quarterback, it's fun. Um, how different is this year? You know, it seems to me like from afar, like you've had, you've been eating appetizers for three years, and now you're mm -hmm. finally sitting down to a meal as a, having your own position. Like, what, what does that change for you? Um, I don't think it changes much. I've been prepared to step in this role, so I think my preparation was good, so it was good for me to just jump in this year. So I think I was pretty prepared for this role. So not much different. Is it, is it more fun, though, to you know go into games knowing you're going to get snaps and everything else, going into practice knowing that guys are watching you? Oh, it is more fun, yep, knowing I'm going to play, knowing – what situation I'm going to be in, yep. Jonathan, how much confidence and swagger does the defense have right now, especially after Friday night's performance against a Utah State squad that in the past couple of years really dominated y'all? Well, I think the confidence is at a high right now, but I think the confidence stems from like our preparation during practice and all the reps we get in practice, and I think that's where our confidence stems from. When you look at San Jose State, Chevin Cordero is the Mount West Offensive Player of the Year. When you, um, when you watch him, what what is the thing? I don't want to say that concerns you, but what's the what's the number one thing that you look at and say to slow down a quarterback like that? We have to do this. What would that be? I would think it's just making them uncomfortable, uh, bringing the pressure to them, um, keeping routes in front of us, and things like that, making them uncomfortable. We'll get at him, I believe. And and making him, because he does have the ability to use his legs and get out mm -hmm. and run a little bit. So when you talk about making him uncomfortable, is that keeping him contained in the pocket and making him beat you in that way? Um, I believe so. Like keeping him contained and keeping that pocket small for him and contained and small just to make him uncomfortable, bring the pressure. I don't know if you even want to answer this, but each week – only because I know Coach might not like it, but each week do you set a goal like, hey, we want to hold San Jose State to this point total. Do you guys do that at all? Well, we have weekly goals like um, keeping the run, the average run under six yards, keep it, getting pressured, getting at least two sacks every 15 passes. So I think those goals lead to a reduced score. So, so not necessarily a, a point. There's no number like, hey, let's hold them to 20 and we'll win kind of thing. No. Um, does that count as my second question? No. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you feel the pass rush has been then this, this year, you know, through all the games? I feel like um, pass rush has been very good. The D-line has been getting after it each and every week. So, yeah, I feel like it's good right now. And was the pick, was that one-handed? I believe so, yeah. <laughs> what kind of ball skills do you have? Like, did you, had you ever played offense or anything? I haven't played offense, but like seeing, um, doing stuff like that in practice, you know, it'll, it'll translate to and the And I game. meant like high school. I know you Oh, high school? Uh, I have a few. I played offense a little bit, not too much. Played fullback a little bit. Was that the career highlight at this point? Or is there something else that stands out when you think of plays you've made? Here? No, that was, that was, that one's up there. I pretty it's a career highlight for me right now. All right, my last one is you guys obviously second Friday night in a row on national TV. Do you get extra juice from just knowing that you know if people like college football they have to turn and watch your game? Um, I guess it's it's cool to know that, but no extra juice, not necessarily no. Obviously, you're on defense, but what's your relationship with like Zach, both being seniors and both kind of having to wait to have this moment to really shine your senior year? Um, Zach's a good guy. We we uh we talk a lot, so I guess we were both prepared for this moment. I I feel like, and we were both wanting this moment to start. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, on that well, on that note, like guys like PJ Ramsey, you know, when you see them get to play, like, is there a different energy 
a senior can bring when he's had to wait for so long. And you've obviously had a lot more playing time than someone like mm-hmm. that. But do you sense that from your teammates? Like, that there's something special about waiting and then getting that opportunity? I feel like there is something special. Um, he's been waiting for it for a long time. I've always felt like he was ready for this moment. So I wasn't surprised when he's getting the shine this year.